robots that harvest fruit, drones that fight pests, cows with smart collars. Can new technology help us feed the world's growing population and prevent climate destruction? Smart farming, our topic on SHIFT. Farming is one of the oldest professions in the world. According to one survey, 82% of German farmers use smart farming technology. Big data makes animal breeding more efficient and artificial intelligence is used to identify the best conditions for growing crops. Farming sensors communicate with one another online to improve efficiency and algorithms process data gathered by drones. Robots have the potential to harvest and do much more. At this California farm, robots are autonomously transplanting saplings, monitoring their growth and moving heavy pots, which weigh up to 400 kilograms from A to B. The farming company says it grows 30 times as many vegetables per hectare as conventional agricultural businesses, and people only play a secondary role. I think robots will not replace but complement humans in the agricultural industry. Robots will help them. The industry is changing. Farmers are becoming agricultural managers. Robots are increasingly being used to tend crops. This autonomous vehicle, for example, sprays pesticides directly onto weeds, cutting back the use of harmful chemicals by up to 95%. Other farming robots destroy weeds using lasers or brute force, thanks to image recognition technology. This technology usually relies on machine learning, which is commonly referred to as artificial intelligence. By processing many different images, computers can learn to differentiate between wanted and unwanted plants and then destroy weeds. Robots are also being trained to carry out more complex tasks because farm helpers are increasingly hard to find. Machines are learning to pick strawberries and harvest grapes. This has many advantages. Robots never tire and can work through the night. Robots are also being used in cattle and dairy farming, but some people claim that this is harming animals. In any case, livestock and dairy farms are forced to boost efficiency to remain competitive. One dairy farm in the southern English village of Shepton Mallet is leading the way and using 5G connectivity to enhance efficiency. This might look like a conventional British dairy farm, but it's not. These dairy cows are integrated into a smart farming system that utilizes 5G technology. Cows wear smart collars that send them to milking robots as soon as their udders are full. The robots then analyse the amount and quality of milk. Fitness trackers in the animal's ears monitor their health. We've got a lot of um, wearable technology on the cows which monitors their activity in a whole number of different ways and that information is fed back to uh, the computers on the farm but also to the phone that the guys running the herd uh, have, and so they can see very early on the earliest indications when a cow might not be so well. The farmer can check on his cows around the clock with his smartphone. We're looking at 866 just through there. So she calved during the night. So this red spike is a spike of activity. Basically, it's telling me her activity's increased, so I can see that she's begin uh, well, her labor, start carving, an increase in her activity, and her activity dropping down, so I can interpret it as she's carved quite safely. These high-tech applications have made dairy farming much more efficient, but what does this mean for animal welfare? Thomas Blaha from the German Veterinary Association for Animal Welfare says that farmers were initially too reliant on high-end tech. Farmers placed a lot of trust in these technologies and cut back on checking their animals' well-being. They spent less time monitoring if the animals had injured themselves 
or fallen ill. But smart farming technology, when properly used, can definitely improve animal well-being. There are more and more tools we can use for that. Like virtual pastures to prevent cattle getting hurt on wire fencing. Farmers can program GPS collar trackers to keep cattle in a certain predefined area from their smartphones. If an animal ventures outside this area, its collar emits a warning signal. If it keeps going, the collar gives it a low energy electric shock, as an electric fence would. Small electric shocks still sound painful. These days, farmers also use drones to monitor crops, among other things. This thermal imaging drone can spot fawns hiding in tall grass. That way they can be rescued so combine harvesters don't mistakenly run them over. This drone drops pods of ichneumon wasps over cornfields. The insects destroy the eggs of European corn borer moths, a pest. In a single day, one drone can service a vast area equivalent to 22 soccer pitches. And this autonomous drone helps protect greenhouse crops from moths. A base station scans the environment with infrared cameras and then dispatches the drone to kill the insects. The world's population is expected to grow by 2 billion people over the next 30 years. So feeding everyone is a huge challenge. The agricultural sector requires a lot of water, land, fertilizer and energy. How can we use these resources efficiently? Precision farming might be the answer. It's all about calculating the exact resources needed to grow plants and feed animals. Dutch researchers and companies are already applying this approach. This is the so-called Food Valley, the Dutch agricultural equivalent to Silicon Valley. Here, researchers like Leo Marcellus are studying the optimal conditions for different crops to flourish. They're tweaking the intensity and color of lights, room temperature, humidity, and air circulation to achieve optimal growth, and they use sensors to monitor how the plants react. We integrate that knowledge in simulation models, in computer models of how the plant is growing. The researchers want to enhance agricultural productivity to boost the yield of vitamin-rich vegetables. Vertical farms near big urban centers are one way to cultivate plants independently of local soil and climate conditions. The Netherlands are famous for their huge greenhouses. Companies like Ritter are working to deploy autonomous high-tech solutions to optimize plant growth. Sensors help monitor how they're doing. To me, the vision is that controlled environment agriculture is one of the main solutions for producing food in an economically good way, but also uh, in a sustainable way. This means using as little water, energy, pesticides and fertilizer as possible. This instrument is sucking air in from the greenhouse and inside this box there's a temperature, humidity, and CO2 sensor. A computer calculates exactly how much water and fertilizer plants need and when fresh air is required. The control system controls those motors. They can control the ventilation, so the roofs for cooling. They can control the screening to put a sunscreen on if the sun is too hot. Thanks to the data gathered by the sensors and smart watering technology, these tomatoes need one-tenth of the resources ordinary tomatoes require. The plan is to one day make this technology available for everyone's benefit. And in the future, everybody can become a grower with the right uh, uh, technology in every place in the world. That sounds like a great idea. But not everyone can afford this kind of high-end tech. And without a stable internet connection, agricultural sensors can't communicate with each other. Does that mean small-scale farmers can't become smart farmers? They might have to, says smart farming expert Ranveer Chandra. The impact of climate change on agriculture is going to be much more for the smallholder farmers. 
That is, even a few degrees of variation in temperature, in the weather, is going to affect smallholder farmers much more who are not aware of what's going to come. So the need for smart farming, the need for using data and AI is much more for smallholder farmers. Kenyan startup Lintera is helping local farmers adapt to climate change. It provides a smartphone service that collates data gathered by crop sensors. Drone data on light intensity is also fed into the system. With a drone, you can actually see crop stress two weeks before you can see it with your naked eye. So it helps the farmer make the right decision in time before the crop has a loss. Some 200 Kenyan smallholder farmers are already using Lintera's crop data. They say that their crop yields have increased by up to 40%. The most fundamental problem that we need to address is how do you really democratize technology? How do you really get some of these sensors, some of these drones, some of these technologies at a point where they can be used by everyone around the world, by these smallholder farmers worldwide? So far, only a small fraction of smallholder farmers in developing countries are tapping into smart farming technologies. But this could well be the key to feeding the world's rapidly growing population. Ranfair Chandra is looking into ways to make these technological advances widely available. One of the biggest problems is cost. Will you put an additional sensor in the farm? Will you buy an additional robot? Will you buy additional cameras? These are all additional costs for the smallholder farmers. We want it to be at a price point so that every grower can start making use of data. That will help us solve the world's food problem. Fighting global hunger with high-end tech sounds very promising. In 2018, algorithms decoded the complex wheat genome. Now we can work on optimizing this crop to feed the world. But two questions remain unanswered. Who owns this agricultural data? And how do the makers of sensors and farming equipment use it? I think that would make sense, since this can protect our planet and boost global food supply. What do you think about smart farming? Should robots manage livestock and harvesting? Let us know on YouTube and Facebook. Goodbye and see you soon.